Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make any photo look like a weathered outdoor poster. I provided this Photoshop template that includes two layers. This photo of an urban brick and stucco wall and this image of plain paper glued onto the wall. Its link is in my video's description or project files. In addition, I also included a custom brush set that we'll use later to make our poster look weathered and abrased. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, some mash that subscribe button and please remember to click like. First, we'll make a displacement map of the glued paper, which we'll use to make our photo look like it's wrapping itself over the contours of the paper. Make sure the glued paper layer is active and press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it. Since displacement maps look best when they're slightly blurred, go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it to pixels. Go to File, in version CC 2022 and later, click Save a Copy. In earlier versions, click Save As. Save it to your desktop for easy access. Name it Displacement and save it as a Photoshop PSD file. Then click Save. If you see this message, just click OK. We don't need the paper copy anymore, so press the Delete key or drag it to the trash. Open a photo or an image you'd like to use for this project. We'll place it onto the poster template by making sure your move tool is active and dragging your photo onto the tab of the poster template. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. Before we resize and reposition it, control or command click the thumbnail of the glued paper base to select its shape. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to our photo. Click the chain link icon to unlink the layer and its layer mask. This allows us to resize and reposition either of them independently of the other. Make the layer active and press Ctrl or Command T to open your transform tool. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height. This links them together. Go to the W or the H and when your cursor changes into a scrubby slider, Click and drag it to the left or right to make your photo smaller or larger. To rotate it, go close to a corner, and when your cursor changes into a curved double arrow, drag it clockwise or counterclockwise. To reposition it, go inside the bounding box and drag your image. Continue finessing it until you're happy with its size, position, and angle. Then press Enter or Return. Now that we have our photo sized and positioned, we'll convert it into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. But before we do, we'll temporarily delete the layer mask because we want the entire photo as a smart object. Click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Now we'll add back the layer mask by Control or Command clicking the thumbnail of the glued paper to select its shape again and then clicking the layer mask icon. Click the chain link icon to unlink the layer and its layer mask. We're unlinking them because when we use the displacement map to warp our photo, we don't want to warp the layer mask as well, which is what would happen if we didn't unlink it. Click the layer to make it active and change its blend mode to multiply. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. The horizontal and vertical scales are 10 each stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels. Find and click the Photoshop displacement file you saved to your desktop and click Open. Immediately, our photo takes on the subtle contours of the paper. In the next few steps, we'll brighten and lighten our poster, followed by reducing the reds and yellows, and then decreasing its overall color vibrancy, which is what happens when colors are exposed over time. It's important to note that since every photo has its own characteristics of brightness, contrast, and color, feel free to adjust any of the amounts of the settings I'll be using for this photo. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. We want the adjustment layer to affect just our photo, 
However, since adjustment layers affect all layers below them in the Layers panel, we'll need to make the adjustment layer into a clipping mask, which will clip it or restrict it just to the photo. To do this, click the Clipping Mask icon or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. For its input white level, I'll type in 215 to brighten the lightest tones, and for the output black level, I'll type in 30 to lighten its overall tones. By setting it to 30, we're essentially restricting the darkest tone of our image to dark gray, not black. Open the Adjustments panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Adjustments. Click the Selective Color icon. This filter allows us to selectively adjust individual colors, as well as the tones of whites, neutrals, and blacks. Before we adjust any of them, we'll clip it to our photo. The reds and yellows tend to fade the quickest over time, so we'll fade these colors as much as possible without completely desaturating them. To do this, open the reds and drag the black all the way to the left. Then, open the yellows and do the same by dragging the black all the way to the left. Open back the Adjustments panel and click the Vibrance icon. Clip it to the photo. I'll reduce the vibrance to minus 50, but again, feel free to adjust this amount depending on your photo's original color intensity. Scroll to the bottom of the Layers panel and shift-click the glued paper base to make it and all the layers above it active. Press Ctrl or Command G to place them into a folder. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the folder. We'll stamp various brushes inside the layer masks from the brush set I provided to make our poster look ripped, weathered, and abrased. First, we'll invert our colors by pressing X on our keyboard. Black should be our foreground color. Open your Brush Tool and Brush Picker. Make sure the opacity and flow are 100%. Assuming you already installed the brush set I provided, scroll to the bottom and open the SG Dry Brush Strokes folder. Feel free to choose whichever brushes you want. These numbers are the sizes of the brushes. To reduce them, make sure your Caps Lock key is off and press the left bracket key on your keyboard. Click on your image. If you don't like the way it looks or want to reposition it, press Ctrl or Command Z to undo the last step. Adjust the size of your brush and click on your image again. We can create the look of abrasion by pressing X to invert our foreground and background colors. White should be our foreground color. Move your cursor slightly over and click again. Open back your brush picker and pick another brush. Make sure your foreground color is black and click on your image. Repeat this with as many brushes as you want. We can rotate a brush by pressing the right or left arrow key in our keyboard or by opening the brush picker and rotating the wheel. We can also squeeze the shape of a brush by dragging either of the dots in toward the center. Continue to use various brushes until you're happy with your poster. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.